It's a real honor and a blessing to be here with all of you. Our topic this morning is the impact of social networks in the language learning process. We all know social networking sites can be a powerful influence in the lives of those who use them, right? According to recent studies, the number of active users of Facebook is reaching close to one billion people. Can you believe that? Twitter users are reaching 150 million people, and Instagram users are getting close to 90 million people. This certainly makes social media become a widespread issue. According to other recent studies by Chicago University, University's Booth of Business School, the time spent by users on Facebook is 6.9 hours per month. I personally think that more time is spent than the reported amount, especially among young people in Costa Rica. They spend two hours every day, every afternoon, at least. Some psychologists have recently diagnosed patients with Facebook Addiction Disorder, FAD. This is when social media, particularly Facebook, overtakes daily activities such as eating or bathing or studying or communicating with other people. It's been said that approximately 350 million people are suffering from this disorder nowadays. It used to be what you had was who you were. Now it is what you post is who you are. There is no doubt many people like politicians, teachers, missionaries, and students everywhere are actively engaged in online communities these days. Our missionary students at the Spanish Language Institute are no exception to the rule. Because of this, I, as the academic director and coordinator, have been concerned about the consequences this situation can have. I wonder, is the use of social media helping our students learn Spanish faster and more successfully, or is it hindering the process? In my opinion, teachers and students should visualize what kind of effects these networking sites are having and how they can prevent the bad and strengthen the positive. We, as Christians and missionary trainers, should be aware of the negative aspects of social networking. One of the bad things about them is narcissism. It's one of the most important negative aspects of this. If we rely on social networking sites to promote ourselves and draw attention to ourselves, and this happens a lot. We should also be aware of how much time it is spent on playing games on Facebook posting updates, or holding conversations that are, are not important to our lives. Mm -hmm. Some of our students at the school, and we have now proof of that, spend more time on social network site, networking sites than on academics. Ouch. They even do it during class time. That's why some teachers forbid, I mean, they, they don't want them to bring the iPads and, and iPhones to the class. Even though they can be very helpful, some students get online and start sending text messages and everything when the teachers are explaining the lessons. And we have seen the difference by analyzing how much time it takes them now to memorize the 14 tenses verb conjugation. We have made studies, and it's taken them more time now. And it's because they're not investing time in the afternoon to memorize the conjugations. The more time students spend on social media sites, the less time they spend communicating in person with native speakers. And this is a big issue because it affects their fluency level, right? The overuse of social networking sites affects the physical and mental health of students in general. Students will be 
students will be lethargic. <coughs> they will be unmotivated to create personal contact with other people, as I said before. They will have a neglected attitude toward good spelling and grammar in the native language. Have you seen that? <laughs> uh huh. And that will definitely be transferred to the second language when they learn it. When students are studying or investigating their class material online, they are pulled to other sites, diverting their attention from their studies. That happens usually. Sometimes, unfortunately, some of them do not deliver their work in the specified time frame. Now, based on this phenomenon, I decided to investigate more. I asked our students to answer a questionnaire regarding this topic. 22 students participated in the survey. And here I have part of the results. I asked them, do you spend time on social media, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, FaceTime, etc., when you're not in class? 95% said yes. And 5% said no. Next, please. If you answered yes, how many hours do you spend every afternoon and or evening on social media? 42% said one hour. 27% said less than an hour. 14% said more than two hours. Do you believe keeping in touch with family and friends through social networking helps, or do you think it hinders the Spanish learning process? Guess what they said. <laughs> it helps, and here I have some of the reasons they gave me. It keeps me encouraged. It keeps, me, it keeps my stress level low. Decompression time. Engaging with loved ones helps refresh me for Spanish language learning. It refuels my energy and helps relieve culture shock. It provides contentment. It's interesting. I think we should not see it as, as negative, right? Like 100% negative, because this really helps. The problem is the amount of time that they're using on this. Next, please. Do you feel homesick when you spend time with family and friends on social networks? 42% said almost never, and 36% said sometimes. Next. If you do use social media, does the time you spend on Facebook, Skype, etc., in the afternoon or evening prevent you from using that time to learn new vocabulary and or verb conjugations? This is a clue. <laughs> for me to know that something is really happening, right? Because 68% <laughs> said sometimes. Sometimes. Do social networking sites give you the opportunity to practice Spanish? This is good. 64% said yes, and they gave me some reasons. I'm going to read one to you. It could definitely help outside of class to Skype with Spanish speaking friends. Mm -hmm. There is certainly that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you think social networks can be used in class to help improve and increase your practice opportunities in the Spanish learning process? Yeah, 73% said yes. And I, I, I agree. I agree. There are a lot of sites, and, and especially YouTube videos, and things that we can do on Facebook that can be very helpful. Someone says teachers could create a group or page that is used for students to ask questions while they are not at school. Hmm. In my opinion, next please. The effects of social media are not totally negative. For Christian people like us, social networking sites can be an enormous productive mission field. We can bring encouragement and spiritual guidance to others and pray regularly for others and their needs. There is always going to be a debate between whether social networking sites uh, are a distraction or a benefit to our education. The main question is, how can students overcome the negative aspects 
of social media while improving upon the positive results? The answer to this question is definitely, next please, <laughs> time management. That's the answer. It's our duty as administrators and language coaches to help them through the process and warn them about the topic. I'm working with the teachers now to, to see how we can encourage students to stop doing that or at least do it in, in a less amount of time so they can concentrate more on memorizing and practicing verbs in the afternoon. Some social networking sites can be very helpful to a student's learning environment as long as they are used correctly. Finally, to conclude, whether we use social media or not, whether we are teachers, language learners, or missionaries to the field, we should always keep in mind that in everything we do, we should ask God to bless us and to use us for his glory. Thank you very much.